Hey there YouTube, I thought I'd shoot a quick video uh, giving some updates on my Geo 704 milling machine and some of the modifications I made to it. The machine has been really working really well. I converted it over to belt drive, got more RPM, put the uh, uh, angular contact bearings in the spindle, everything's working great. And I have been using the machine really hard. I've made a lot of parts with it over the last few months and it's worked really well. Uh, unfortunately, recently the, the poor little thing um, finally needed a little bit of attention. So the preload in the spindle, um, I'm not sure for some reason it, I needed to take that apart and readjust it. I also had to adjust the tension on my belt. But one of the things that I noticed um, and using this milling machine, uh, this, even with the belt drive, or at least the partial belt drive, even with the upgraded angular contact bearings, still always had uh, some chatter in the, the surface finish when I was side cutting with end mills. And I've always thought I was crazy, but my little tiny Harbor Freight mini mill in the back of my mind, I've always thought that this thing may have given me a better surface finish than the GO704, and I think it did. And the reason, I believe, is this. The GO704 has a, uh, a quill. The mini mill from Harbor Freight does not have a quill. And by nature of the design, I don't know if you can see this, I'm trying to get this to focus, the uh, splines that the the spindle, you know, the quill spindle slides slops into. I can't, I cannot get this to focus. So, but anyway, this thing inserts into splines into this thing, and there's some clearance. And what happens is, as this thing's running, I don't know if you can hear it. It, it, it kind of rattles and it affects the surface finish. So you can imagine as each each flute of the end mill is entering the cut, it kind of loads up the loads up the spindle, and then as it's exiting the cut, it sort of springs away. So you can imagine, you know, at a high RPM, this thing's just like rattling all to, all you know the whole time it's running. So. I did a little experiment one time. I took this part and I just shoved some shim stock in between these splines and the splines inside this, you know, this housing that spins. That made a huge difference. So I've seen a few other uh, videos on YouTube where people have done similar things. They've made spacers to insert into here out of plastic. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make a spacer to put in here to prevent the uh, quill from jumping around. Ultimately, I think someday I'm going to totally eliminate the gears and everything and move to a, a direct belt drive configuration. So I plan on yanking this whole assembly out, maybe just putting one bearing here to support the top of this thing, putting pulleys up here. But for now, I'm going to live with the high-low. There's some advantages to the high-low gear as well. So, okay, so here we go. I'm going to make this and get this thing installed. So mission accomplished. I made a bushing. Actually, I had to make two of them because uh, first one just couldn't quite hold the uh, sizes that I need. I had to make one, try it, and then make another one. But anyway, it worked really good. This little bushing, just uh, you know, you can see how it works. Just push that down in there, then slide the quill up inside of it, and that fits just tight enough to keep the uh, quill from slapping around. So that worked really well. On my machine, the outside diameter of this little spacer was 1.469, and the inside diameter was 0. Uh, let's just say 851. Um, put some taper on each end of it to, to help it, you know, guide itself in there but that worked really well so now there's no more um, clickety clack it's all gone so hopefully that will do the job and keep this thing from slapping around and help me get a little bit better surface finish so 
Thanks for watching.